Father, we do thank you for um, people being able to come here tonight. And um, it's not midweek, but uh, we have been working and everyone's tired. But thank you, Lord, that people want to hear the word of God, hear you speak to them, Lord God. So um, give us ears to ear tonight, Lord God. And, um, and then maybe you can break chains in us. Maybe you can set us free. Maybe you can um, help us to... Um, better understand the gifts lord that you give us to express through us uh, an issue forth into the body lords from encouragement and building up so help us as we just get into this now in jesus name all right Amen. Alrighty, so we're doing one corinthians we're gonna get on to chapter 12 tonight i think we're we're probably about four or five weeks off because we're gonna do a little bit on the gifts of the spirit so we're not going to really do massive amounts but there's a background to the gifts of the spirit um, that needs to be kind of put forward if we're going to do it properly and um, some of it's around about if you go to any kind of industry right and you want to get a job there you've got to speak the language all right and you've got to say if you go into IT the, the interview will, will see if you can speak the language of that so it's not about just knowing what's there it's about can you make it real and articulate that into you know an actual job situation diesel fitters or whatever you do <laughs> yeah, but it's a language that you have to learn. So if you go to, if somebody says to you, "I feel that I need to go to um, China to go and be a missionary," the first thing I'd say is, "Can you speak Chinese?" Right? Now the thing is, is it, it, they don't really have to, I suppose, or they might have aspirations to do that. But I'd be like, "Well, what have you got to do with China to go into that culture and be relevant to them, so people are going to listen to you?" Do you know what I mean? And the reason why I'm saying all this is because where God's concerned, um, when we are Christians um, and we're in the church, then we, um, we're going to find out tonight uh, and over subsequent weeks that we're people who God really wants to speak through and really wants to, it, I call it, issuing forth through. Because it's hard to put um, words around spiritual language. It's, it's hard to do that. So God issue, issues forth somehow. And we're going to see how that, how that works into the body. And then people get built up and encouraged based upon people speaking out that thing or speaking in tongues or a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, all that kind of thing. We're going to look at that stuff in, in probably next week um, and probably the week after as well. Because it's extremely important that we, um, uh, as Christians and aspiring to be a church, is that God can speak through us and he can use us. Now, as we go through this, it's not like a finger-wagging contest to say if God hasn't used you or, he's, or you're a bit scared or you're a bit reserved or you don't really want him to use you and you feel that you don't want to be prominent at all, well, join the club. I don't either, right? But the thing is, at the time, he's got to get us so that we are in his, his hands to the point where he can use us and we are ready and, and willing to be used by him. And, um, and, and a lot of that's to do with proximity to Jesus, you know, to knowing who he is and, um, and who, who you are in him. So all, that, all this sounds really complicated, but it's actually about your love for God, right? And, um, and if you've not been used in gifts and all, it doesn't mean you don't love God and all that. It means we're all on a journey in this room of getting to know how to be um, um, our vertical relationship with the Lord. We talk a lot about that how to kind of yield, submit and abandon before God and everything. But then that has a, a horizontal expression and uh, we're going to find out that God eagerly wants to work through each and every one of us and for us to seek him to find out how. All right, And, um, and it's not just because it's an ex exhibition we'll find out. It's not theatre, it's not for my ego. But what it is, it's for the building up of the body of Christ and God desires that we, uh, we do that. But one of the things to learn the language of God to be able to be in the actual ballpark of even starting off with any of this thing we're going to go down to basics and some people have been through this again it's worth repeating but there's a few there's a you know I want this to be a dialogue this bit about um, uh, how God speaks to us right so if you're not if you're dull to that if you're dull to how God speaks then how can he speak through you do you know what I mean it's like it's like you're not learning the language you're not in the industry you're not in the kind of uh, the ballpark where God can say, "Oh, that's somebody who knows," you know, will be able to. Uh, even if I speak, if somebody from um, the IT world, and this has happened recently, hasn't it, Brett? Speaks to me about IT, and I, I'm like, it's like static. You know what I mean? And I'm like, going, I'm nodding, going, because I'm polite. And I'm like, going, yeah. And then Brett goes, Do you know what I mean? I'm like, not really, no. So, <laughs> it's like, and, uh, 
and also in a, in a, and also um, Rick's been up and he's been saying yeah he's sure he's and this is what I do and he's I saw this video and I'm like going I have no idea it's like a knitting pattern you know what I mean I'm just like <laughs> it really is like that you don't those well, I don't know I don't know how to knit either it's pretty the things that I can't do it is um, is is lots so um. So do you get what I mean? It's like we've, we've got to get in the ballpark, the, the actual area of what is God saying, what's he said, and uh, what's he like, and how does he issue forth through us. And we'll, this will be, might be two weeks minimum, okay? Because it's really important that we do this. And um, my dream, and I think the Lord's brought us together for this reason, is that we become people who do ex- ex- uh, exercise the gifts. And there is people in this room who exercise the gifts, all right? So this is not like, there's no gifts and we're in crisis. No. It's like people say things and you don't even know you're saying it, you know, and, you, and you, you've got like a, a bubbling over of the spirit and you do things. But then one of the best, one of the things that happens is, um, what is that? The, um, the, the devil tries to distract us. He gets our eyes on us. We've talked about that a lot in this group. And that's one of his main ploys, actually. You know, get your eyes off Jesus, put it on yourself. Then you're surely never going to, because you'll all be internalizing your own kind of stuff that's going on. And, um, and sometimes, you know, we've all got issues and some people need ministry because life's hard. It's, it's a tragedy in the room. You know, there's tragedy in people who are not here right now and we need to pray about that. But, um, you know, there's, um, there's a desire from God to still speak into things, you know. And um, some, of this, some of the gifts work in the group, in the ecclesia gathering that we have. Some of it's when you're not in the group and you, you know that you should, you know, go to talk to someone one-on-one. There's a pastoral gift there. There's all that kind of thing. But these are the spiritual gifts that kind of come out and, um, and, and do all that stuff. So, first of all, let's refresh our memories. Uh, we've taught on this before, but it's worth repeating because we've got to get it really simple and in plain terms, how does God speak to us? Can anyone remember the primary way which he's ordained to speak to us? Through his word. Through his word. All right. So what exactly does that mean? What, uh, is it, do you open your Bible one day and suddenly there's a mouth going, Hello! You know, you're like, that'd be freaked out. Ah! You know, and it'd be handy, wouldn't it, sometimes when you're in like a crisis that you did open the Bible. And has anyone done spiritual bingo when you go, God, I just need you to speak to me. And you open a page line and you go, you know, and you go, then he went up and touched the coffin. And it's like, it actually, I did just open it on that then, right? And, and you're like, what does that mean then? You've got to touch you know? the coffin. Yeah, so, so it's like, it doesn't really work, does it? So what's the, what's the, the actual on-the-ground process to where we get into that industry, into that kind of ballpark? It's wrong words, all this industry. No, it's not. It's a love relationship, and it's a tenderness, and it's a proximity to Jesus risen and glorified. Um, we used to sing a song you are beautiful beyond existence too marvellous for words too wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard why don't we still do remember that, that? Yeah, you it. are beautiful beyond oh, yeah, description yeah. do you want to join in the song book yeah if someone can play it then we can yeah. do it <laughs> we'll try it yeah we'll try and get them going but the thing is what I'm trying to say is that kind of thing when we sing it when we sing them kind of songs we can either be singing words or we can be touching the heart of God with that. And, and, and if, we, if we're struggling with that, don't, you're, you're in good company, right? To be, you know, really experiencing God and re- experiencing Jesus' touch, you know, and all that kind of thing. But um, it's really good if we can, that's our starting point to be, because um, I can give you formulas. I can give them until to, to they come out of years. But formulas are no good if there's no proximity to Jesus and, you, and you're hankering after Jesus. You're pursuing the Lord and you, 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 you're going for it, you know what I mean, your, your sole thing is to go, God, unless, you know, and there's another song, um, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you, you know what I mean, so these are scriptures, but I mean, and what, what the, the, the overarching principle there is, I'm thirsting for you, I can't be quenched by anything, I, I love coke without sugar in it, you know, I, I probably drink too much of it, don't we Jan, but the thing is, <laughs> is um, the, um, Jesus, he's the only thing that can quench that spiritual thirst. He's the only one yeah. who can bring that, that, de- that desire, to the, uh, the, the craving to an end, and, and hungering for his um, righteousness and thirsting for his righteousness. And, um, and that's um, something that, if you get, it can get really frustrating. Sometimes we just put it away for a while and we go, you know, that's just too hard, that's on the too hard pile. And um, you're not meeting me where I am, so I'm going to get really impatient and I'm not going to pursue you anymore. Well, no, let's refresh tonight. If, it's, if this is you, you might have a great relationship with God, well done, tell me how, 
right? But the thing is, is get that refreshed tonight so that we can start all this process. And when we go to the Word of God, we're not stumbling over passages. But God say, you know, God, when you read the Psalms, you're reading it and you're experiencing what David's experiencing, and you say, you know, you know, all the things that have been said. Hello. How are you? So, hi Helen. Hi. Sorry, no problem. This pursuit, this longing, this desire for, for Jesus to, to be in proximity to him and to be um, sidling up next to him and to be just placing your life in direct proximity to the Lord, all right, should be something that's in our life. Now, it might be just like, oh, well, thanks, Gary, that's just an aspiration that you might experience. But I'm not really experiencing that. I've been in a dry place for a long time. Well, that's biblical as well. But you can you can begin tonight to say to the Lord, I'm tired of this desert. I don't want this cactus anymore. You know what I mean? I don't want to be in this place where it's dry and there's nothing and it's all hard and difficult and all that kind of thing. Lord, and he might keep you there. But at least you, you, you've set your compass to G, God. Right? And you're going for God. You know what I mean? So the first thing is let's get ourselves in a place where we're hankering after him again. Renew that kind of fire. Renew that um, heartbeat for Jesus. That, that um, life that wants to really touch the life of God. You know? Has it been years? I don't want to show hands. Has it been years? Has it been months? Has it been days? Like, were you there this morning? You know, so we, uh, there might be that in the room tonight where it's been so long since you've had that kind of excitement and, 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 and tenderness from God. What's that, some of you? What, that's been a long time since, you know. But He's there, and He wants to give that to us. And then when we do approach the Word of God, because this is the the primary way, really, that by which God's going to speak to us, um, we can we can be in a good position to hear what's being said through the words. And like we said, you don't open the Bible, and there's not like a mouth going, "Hello, good morning. How's your bacon sandwich? By the way, it's borderline whether you should be eating bacon. You know, something like that. I don't know. It's it's like. <laughs> That's not what happens. So we've got to go, how, how does it happen? And it's first having a heart that's ready to receive it. And that's really what the last few minutes was about. Positioning yourself so that we've got a heart which is ready to, to be, you know, a seed to be sown. Or a, and, and that affects our hearing. Um, sensitivity to the Spirit. Sensitivity to, to God's Word. Because um, the second thing, I'd say, would be um, God, the way God speaks is through His Word in combination with the Holy Spirit. So... It's a double, it's a double uh, combination punch. We go to His Word, we ask His Spirit to help us with that, and the, the result is that you know we can. The, sometimes verses get lifted off the page. You know, sometimes we can see it, and it just goes. You know what? I'm really enjoying that today. You know, that thing that really didn't press any buttons last week is actually making sense. If you ever had that where you just read something, then at a particular season, that passage now becomes life to you. You know, because the Holy Spirit's made it that way. The, the Word of God's living and active. You know, and um, and once you get it in you, it's a it's a dynamic that really just just does move around and help. So uh, the first thing is through His Word. So let's just get out into the room. Has anyone got any tips how you um, have the Word speak to you? Does anyone know how in your life how does that happen? How does the Word of God Speak into your life. I've had times where I've like remembered a specific verse at a crucial moment, mm -hmm. um, and that's affected how I've reacted to a situation. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing knowing the Bible like has, you know, it will obviously help. If you don't know the Bible, you won't rem suddenly remember a verse, you know. So great, yeah. Is it? Using the Bible rather than acting on emotion and trying to thought, sort things out by yourself. Just going to the Word and just reading for a while and yeah, that works. Hmm. Prayer. Yeah. I think prayer is really important. I think without prayer and being close to God, it's hard to understand sometimes what the Word, how the Word. Hmm. Does speak to you like it. You've got to have that closeness and prayer and things like that for it to be revealed to you. Yeah. Sometimes I've read passages and that's made any sense, but then 
I've said prayed about something, and then I've read the, the, the passage again, and it's like, oh, so that's what mm. they were talking about at that particular time. Mm. Yeah. The way the word helps me is, is, and we've used this a lot, so, and it's still in the word, and it's still relevant for today, is two stories. One of them's the uh, prodigal son, and one of them's the woman caught in adultery. And we've done this, we've talked about this. But if we can just take that story, how Jesus treats those situations, not with harshness and finger wagging law, but with grace and mercy, okay? That's how it's treated. Now, we can be assured that the ones on the throne now, the one who's on the throne risen and glorified, is the same Jesus. Okay, so his, his, his attitude towards you as his child is the same, you know, and the, 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 the stories were told was to furnish our understanding of who God is, you know, so when, so now this takes on a real dynamic, because when you go to God and you're feeling a little bit as if, you know, you're downtrodden, beaten up a little bit, you might have even self-inflicted yourself with a season of sin, and you go to God and you go, well, what's, what can I do? You know, and there's the stories going, you know, God doesn't want you to sin and just go, oh, it's all right. No, sin's really serious. But we are sinners. So we have to go to God. And I think of the prodigal son that the father, you know, runs down the street. He doesn't just wait and go looking at his watch going, where have you been? You know, get in there, you know. You have, I've made your room into an office. We're going to have to make it into your bedroom again. You know, it's not like, nah, party, way. You know, runs down, you know, all this kind of thing. Um, so we've got tenderness and, and the expectation that the, the, prodig the prodigal's coming back. And if you've <coughs> ever been like a prodigal, you know, it's great to come back and know the Father's yeah. got a love for you that's never going away. So if you, you know, find yourself in that situation, just just rehearse these things in your mind, you know. The, the pro just come back to God and he's got his arms wide open for the, the one who repents and, and wants to make amends and come back. Yeah? Um, and the woman caught in adultery, the tenderness of God there, we've mentioned it before, I won't labour on it, but his, his love for that person uh, sent away all the legalistic murderers who wanted to see a blood, bloodshed pie, you know, wanted to ah, ram this kind of situation uh, into the ground, you know. <coughs> Jesus comes along, well, you're going to condemn this girl, you know, this woman, you know, what about you? Have you, have you ever sinned? Drop in the stones, walk away. Biggest, big, bigger thing to say about that, but we've said it already. So, you know, that, that kind of mercy and grace is how the Word of God comes alive, three-dimensional, and you see Jesus, who's alive now. Don't forget that. The whole point of this is that Jesus is alive right now on the throne, his Father's throne, and he's running everything. All power, authority, and dominions have been given to him. So you can trust in him, and prayer is one of the things, and as we're tenderly approaching with our hearts bowed low, we go to him, and um, he can you know, fix the thing and restore us. 1 John 1 verse 9, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just. Who else, can anyone end that one? To forgive your sins and change your Yes, and, um, and, and everybody in the room who's a real sinner knows that one, because that's what gets you out. <laughs> and the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Yeah, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. So when you get up and you sort of like you know whatever's happening in your life and all that you every morning is a fresh start and god you can go every midday is a fresh start and god every evening you can go to him and, and lay your heart before him anytime and he'll forgive you you know but you can be sure that once you get up and you start afresh have a new day you know just get up pick up your cross again and carry on and that's how the word of god you know becomes three-dimensional speaks into 2018 i remembered what year it is and um and so, yeah. Anyone else? How does the Word of God meet you where you are? I'm not sure I understand the question. I feel like it's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Word of God, if, if we're just looking at. Like someone else says something and mm. then I get a revelation about it or it's told to me at the time I need mm. to hear it and mm. you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, you can. Specific. But also, as well as that, you can get on the back of a psalm. If you've got a psalm and you're feeling, feeling a bit dry, you can get into that. And you, you know that David's prayed this or whoever's wrote the psalm. And then you can sort of get in on the back of it and just express that to God yourself, you know. And, um, and in there, there's, there's, there's bits in the psalms which speak to you and they can yeah. you know, just remind you that God is your fortress in a time of trouble. Yeah. He is your refuge. He is... You know, you, you you can be under his wings. He's not really got wings, but it's just an illustration. That, you know, and, and he's protecting you and all that. So it's spoken to you. 
Yeah. Not to harm you. Yeah. Yeah. So in conjunction with the Holy Spirit, the uh, the Lord really wants to speak into our life. And don't forget when we talk about the Holy Spirit, that's Jesus speaking to us. Right? They're separate entities, but it's God who's you know the agent of salvation is the Holy Spirit who wants to speak through us. So um, we'll um, then another one is which we want to really get onto, but we're going to do a couple more as well. Is through the gifts. Um, the idea is that the body of Christ comes together. And then God issues forth to one another to build one another up. And um, this is what we're doing, a preamble. Tonight will be an introduction to talking about tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy and all that. But we're going to get into chapter 12 in a few minutes. Another way, an audible voice. God can speak to you. It doesn't happen to many people, but it has. And God you know, speaks to you like that. Um, a still small voice. You know, like something, there's, a, there's the hum of the world, the, there's, everything's going on around you and so, suddenly you get this thing that goes and it's directive and you go, oh, okay, not happened a lot with me, eh? What's the difference between the audible voice and the Well, the audible voice, you can hear it like you can hear my voice, but the still small voice would like be in the small. It's like downloaded and, and then you are thinking like it. Like a computer. <laughs> like a computer. You know, yeah. Like it's like it, yeah, it's still, still voice. small, but I like it recently. When you hear it, you know, like you talk to yourself. You don't do that, is that just an exactly? No, I, I talk. I do talk. <laughs> yeah, you know, so when you're having thoughts, I feel like uh, in prayer, God has downloaded a, you know, like a scripture mm-hmm. or a thought that is correct. Is that maybe a negative thought? Why is that? That, yeah. like, that makes me, that feels like he's speaking to me. I don't think it's uh, the inaudible voice of God, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's still small. But I'd say that that's something that's within. Anne Marie was just going to. Yeah, I had something. I've had it before, and I've had it recently as well. And, and I love it when it does happen because it, it just confirms that I'm not working on my own. Because we're humans, and we have emotion, we have feeling, um, and we support others, and we do things. But I had this thing um, a few weeks ago, and I, would, I just felt really strong that I had to do something for someone. And I was like, oh, is it me, though, or is it God? Yeah. yeah? yeah. So this yeah. is this still small voice inside me going, mm, you know, do this, do this. And I was like, oh, yeah, well. So I waited a couple of weeks and I prayed about it. And then that one morning I was feeling really, really strong about it and thought, you know, I really need to do that. I really need to do it. So that morning I prepared to do what I needed to do. And the person who I needed to see, no word of a lie. So I, I prepared it all, got it ready, done what I needed to do. And the person I needed to see, who doesn't actually work with me, rocked up at my works 45 minutes before anybody normally rocks up. I was there early. And I was just, and as I was going into work, I looked and thought, oh, is that? I'm like, nah, it won't be, because that person's on my mind, because I'm going to do it. I'm going crazy, but that's confirmation. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going, yeah, I know I'm doing the right thing now. It's all ready. And then I thought, that is them. And I looked through and went, what are you doing here, even? And then we had a conversation and I explained to them where I'd been the last few weeks and how I was feeling. And they said to me, actually, two weeks ago, I actually really needed this. Um, but something came through for me. And then they said, but I've done some things and I've realised I need this now. And it's actually just at the right time. It's exactly what I need. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's still small voice inside. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, yeah. Like the so, the, yeah, so that's a still small voice that's, because I'm, 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 that's the, the download, it's the same thing that you're saying, are you? Mm. Yeah. So you didn't read it. Because I, I, yeah, I didn't read it, I felt it, and then I'm like, is that yeah, like like emotional, or is it God, am I being, yeah. am I being, yeah, yeah. 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 I I had, um, the, the other one, I think, when, uh, the day I actually had the Holy Spirit, that I heard this voice in my head say, I was talking to somebody about something completely different, mm. and this voice in my head said, now Sarah will be safe. Mm. And that, that could be that's the yeah. Yeah. Yep. And to be honest, you have the Holy Spirit anyway, all the time, just say, yeah, just come on one day and then go on the next day. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, I think that's, in many people's experience, the, the articulation of what's happened there will be different. But yet, yeah, God has somehow, um, you've distinctly made his mark, and sometimes, I don't know, really, 
really think so. Audible voice, still small voice, creation. You know, the uh, heavens pour forth speech daily. And, um, you know, a lot of people can get in the area where you're walking through the street and you're realising that everything that you see and the beauty of the, the world and everything like that is um, is all for Jesus. It's all been, you know, it all speaks of him. And it's, it's awesome. So that can speak to you. Some people are better at that than others. Other people, you know, not too switched on to that. But then others, I think Beck is one of the ones who really does enjoy and feel that when she's in the open fields or whatever the, so the sea that that's where she's really tuned in you know so and also becky's been prophetic i'm not trying to embarrass you but you have been prophetic before so yeah so um circumstances can speak you find yourself in a situation and you go oh right okay that's kind of weird and then um you know you just sense somehow that god's put you in this situation or um, or, or the, the circumstance makes you act upon something and that's God he sometimes forces your hand you know because he knows that you're not going to just hear too clearly what needs to be done so he'll, he'll bring circumstance around and, and you will act upon that circumstance and really he said something in that he's directed you so you've been kind of you know it's, it's almost like him just taking lordship over your life and just going right Okay, I need you to be in that place, doing that thing, speaking that to, the, to that person, and he just moves it all around. So, um, uh, there's all there's different ways. Conscience speaks to you. Uh, Job, the book of Job says that dreams um, speak to you. Angels can speak to you through dreams, or you know, there's lots of evidence to do that. What I want to do is concentrate on just one of these, so, so that you don't know it's the only way that God speaks. But He really, really wants to speak this way. Um, through the gifts of the Spirit. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Last week we talked about some um, head coverings, which is pretty complicated stuff. Not even going to go spend more than 10 seconds on that. There's your 10 seconds. Um, then we talked about the Lord's Supper and um, you know, evidence that you know what church was like, what Paul called church, was actually a little bit different than what's going on at the moment. But not for us because we're trying to do that as well. And then. In that context of you know um, the um, church and everything like, we've got chapter 12, and I'm reading from the NIV, so I must apologise for that. But um, we're going to talk about a few things that are going on in just chapter 12. So here we go. Now about spiritual gifts. Has anyone got gifts there? Yeah. yeah. Get a pen. Get scrub it out. It's not there. That's more yeah. like it. Yeah, it's more like it. So the actual word there, um, the word there is pneumaticos, and it means it means the spirituals. Now, don't get anything about spirituals, church. Don't start thinking that. It's about the spirituals, right? So now about the spirituals, brothers. So what happens there? Uh, uh, I do not want you to be ignorant. What happens there is that. Um, the spirituals is anything it's like prayer bible teaching and what paul did is he considered the gifts to be as normal as praying as being a bible you know studying the bible as you doing it when you enter into the god thing it says it's as um normal if that's normal um as that so what we shouldn't do is because it's all ball packed into one kind of expression about the spirit spiritual um the spiritual aspect of things then the, the issuing forth of spiritual gifts is no more special and you need to be no more than who you are sat there in your chair tonight it's the normal and um, just the ordinary me and you who are going to issue forth these things so there might be a temptation with spiritual gifts to go wait until I know the Bible completely that's not it might contradict because that's my, what, what, what we're saying no you just need to be in proximity to the Lord and pursuing the Lord and he's, and he's going to work through that thing so the ordinary me the ordinary you can all issue forth the gifts and we're going to look at that in a minute and we're going to especially in chapter 12 later on um, I do not want you to be ignorant um, the word gifts isn't there um, you know that when you were pagans somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. So what he's saying there is that you know there were people who were worshiping false gods and everything, and they couldn't speak. They would they couldn't speak. Um, and the, what Paul's going to go on to talk about is that God dearly wants to speak because he's not an idol. He's actually the living God. So it's a, what's the best thing what people do with each other? Hey, 
text. <laughs> Very funny. It's speaking, isn't it? In fact, we're losing a lot because of technology about interpersonal, you know, like communication and everything like that. The best thing you can do is speak, and um, and God wants to do that with His people and through His people. You know that when you were a pagan, some or other, you influenced and led astray to mute idols. Um, Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, God wants to speak through the gifts. He's not um, a dumb God, a mute idol, or anything like that. Uh, but here's the thing for them is that they had uh, emperor worship. Alright? So, what they had to do, we've, we've covered this before, but just to remind you, they had, everyone had to go and um, sprinkle some salt over a flame and, and give their allegiance to Caesar. Because right, he was considered to be a god. right? And um, the Christians weren't going to do that. So what they would do is um, they'd say risk life and limb by saying Jesus is Lord. You know, They wouldn't go and do that. So for them this isn't just a throwaway comment. Now I've been in churches where it's the, they have a superstition. And what they've said is, uh, they've prayed for somebody and said, hey, are you, do you want to follow Jesus? Yeah. Well say these words. What words? Jesus is Lord. And they say, Jesus is Lord. Says, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit because you said Jesus is Lord. What nonsense. It's ridiculous, honestly. It's so ridiculous. That is not what's going on there. It's, it's merely a reference to the fact that um, he's mentioned the mute idols, Caesar's there, you've got your Caesar worship. No one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, which is fair enough. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. All right, let's just turn to John 16. Just quickly dive into John 16. 12 to 14 John 16 12 to 14 I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear here here sorry I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear but when he the Holy Spirit the Spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth he will not speak on his own he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come he will bring glory to me and taking from what is mine and making it known to you so um, all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why he said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. So basically when the Holy Spirit speaks, he's speaking what Jesus wants him to speak. Okay? Through you. So when you say Jesus is Lord, it's what the Lord wants you to say. You know? But for them, it wasn't just a mere phrase. It was a, a change in, in allegiance. It was, um, your life was at risk. It was something that was going to be... Um, you know, really dangerous for you to make that decision not to sprinkle the thing and therefore risk your life. So it's a massive thing what's being said there. When you say Jesus is Lord and Caesar isn't Lord, that's life, you know, your life's at risk. So there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God. God works in all of them, in all men. All right, so there you go. I mean, a lot of people would say, and it's quite plain there, that you've got the Trinity involved in it. The Spirit, the Lord, and God. All right, so you don't say God the Father. So, But you've got um, the Trinity. All God's involved in what we do. He's the one. The whole Godhead is working through you to deliver the spiritual package, the present, the gift, to your brothers and sisters in the group. All right, so I'm trying to get over the importance of what this is that God wants to speak through us. Now to each one is the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So the Spirit wants to manifest, okay, for the common good, not for someone's ego or someone's glory or anything like that. It's only to lift up Jesus, right? So we read there in John. The Holy Spirit does everything to lift up Jesus. He's pointing it constantly to the Lord. All right, and that's what we should be doing when we're thinking, right, let, as we go close to the Lord, He'll help us to get lower in our estimation of our own, you know, self. And it, um, we'll be like John the Baptist. I must become lower and He must become higher. So that's what the what proximity to the Lord does. It makes us have that kind of humbling kind of thing. Then we can be in a position for the Lord to really work through us and it not be something like, 
you know, if, if you heal somebody, next thing you've got like a TV show and a book. You know what I mean? It's like, because there's a lot of people do that. And, you know, one of the striking things about the apostles is that in Acts they did extraordinary miracles and all that. And then when you get to the epistles that they wrote later about, you know, what they were told to write down by the Holy Spirit, none of it was, did you see what we did in Jerusalem? Did you see the crowds? Did you see the lame man walk? Did you see the man at the beautiful gate and he's dancing around afterwards? That was me. Oh, I can't be. I'm going to have to be humble about this, but yes, it was me. I did that. You know? No, they knew who did it. It was the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus working through them uh, when they did all that stuff. And um, so they'd been through a series of, um, you know, discipleship where they'd been crushed of the self. Their their will, their wanting to take the glory, had completely gone. And, um, you know, that's where the Lord wants us in all this. So. 7, 12, 7. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To the other the message of knowledge. By means of the same Spirit to another faith. By the same Spirit to another gifts of healing. By that one Spirit to another miraculous powers. To another prophecy to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one, just as he determines. All right? So split up, if you like, you've got gifts um, to fit the human experience. So humans have got, like, probably three uh, major things about them, thought, word, and deed. All right? So that's how we operate, isn't it? If you're going to... Your employer will expect you to think, speak, and do stuff. Or else you're not going to get paid and you'll soon be sacked. All right? And um, you, your relationships depend on thought, word, and deed. Same with God. He works through us through thought, word, and deed. And that's what he wants to do and work through us. So we've got through thought, knowledge, gift of knowledge, wisdom, and discernment. All right? So that's really what goes on in your thoughts and all that kind of Obviously, it's issued for through your senses, but it goes on first of all in your thoughts. Um, your words, so you've got tongue, um, prophecy, and interpretation of tongues. So that's kind of like through word. And um, this is not an exact science. It's kind of all this overlap. But it's just to try and sort out that God has fitted the gifts perfectly to work through the human experience and be received by the human experience. Oh, lastly, the thought word, and then deed, uh, faith, miracles, and healing. So um, that's the things that you'd kind of do. Um, and we'll just we'll just kind of move on a little bit. Um, so verse 12, Paul's trying to get something over in this, so let's just listen up. The body is a unit. Through it, th though it is made up of many parts, and through all its parts, are, though its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptised into one spirit, into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Do you remember 1 Corinthians 10, when it talked about food and drink, spiritual food and drink? And it went right back to the Israelites, and it talked about the water from the rock, which is a picture of the outflowing of the Holy Spirit. Well, all he's saying there is that you were given one spirit to drink. It's not different, it's the Holy Spirit, okay? Now the body is not made up of one part but of many. If, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would, would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. So in other words, the gifts themselves don't make you the body, you're in the body anyway. But the gifts just place you in the body what function that you have throughout that one body of Christ so we can't go you know we'll find out later you can't go well you know I'm not this or I'm not that so I don't belong because the body is in and of itself separate from the function by which you will be in the body do you get it so you, we are one without the gifts we the gifts don't make us one Christ makes us one so just you're just saying that because I think the Corinthians had a problem with you know independence and stuff like that, independent people If the 17, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? 
but in fact God has arranged the parts in the body each and every one of them just as he wanted them to be so we've got a couple of things here back to 11 um, all these things are the work of one and the same spirit and he gives them to each one just as he determines so he gives them how he determines and he places you in the body how he determines so basically who's in charge God's in charge and he's always in charge of these kind of things so just to keep that in mind 19 if they're all one part where would the body be as it is there are many parts but one body the eye cannot say to the hand I don't need you and the head cannot say to the feet I don't need you on the contrary those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable and the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour so just to go back to that the, um, the eye cannot say to the hand I don't need you uh, and the head cannot say to the feet I don't need you one of the worst things that breaks up the unity in Christ is independence right and it happens a lot because people are genuinely gifted it's not pretenders here I'm talking about it's people who have been given a gift from God but then to get on your high horse and go galloping off in the distance is not the spirit of Christ or what's being said here it's about interdependence so we if we find out that we are prophesying or we're speaking in tongues or we've got other gifts and all that kind of thing then if we sit there and go well, right then you know that, what's, that's really that's me sorted then I'm just a prophet so you know well, you're all going to have to just kind of put up with me that no it's like we go oh right you know we find out that we start to prefer other people's gifts so it, t it says it in a minute so we'll just do that <clears throat> on the contrary those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable and the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour and the parts that are unpre unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honour to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body but that in its parts should have equal concern for one another so if you do find out that you like you know a great dot 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 whatever God's working through you God's doing that and he's, he's you know people are being encouraged people are coming to you and saying you know that what you said was really good it helped me and all that kind of thing then hold on put the brakes on because what we're being told here is that we, we, we're, we're not to be elevated above the body or to distance ourselves from it and try and set up you know garywardministries.com or something like that but what we what we're to do is to go right then how can I serve you and get you know and how can God what do I do because I want to really get these people to be blessed and built up and encouraged and all that kind of thing and does that make sense are you sure? If one put 26, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration and those speaking in different kinds of tongues are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. Now he says I'll show you an excellent way and that's what we'll go into next week. But just wanted to spend some time, not much time left, but some spend some time picking apart some of the themes that are in here. One of them is when he says first are apostles, second prophets. Here's what's not happening there. He's not going, hey guys, there's all the apostles, can't touch this. Then prophets, and it's like a ranked situation. Right? No, no, some of your Bibles will say it is a ranked situation because, because of the way the church has ranked um, positions and stuff like that. But what it's saying, this word here, God has appointed... Is, is it can be called placed so God has placed people in the body of Christ to establish churches and make churches grow and the way that would go in would be first an apostle will go and establish the yeah the foundation of a church they'll go in there and start the thing off and hear from God and somehow that would happen and, and then next you'll get the prophetic gift in there you'll get people who are prophetic coming in and, um, and it, people who are sat in here tonight, you're wondering where the prophets are. Well, I know that there's the prophetic gift in this room because I've heard it, right? 
So there you go. Um, then third, teachers. So there's teachers needed to tell people what the, you know the Bible says and offer you know the manna and just say here's a piece of steak as well if you want that. You know. So there you go. Um, then workers of m- miracles. I mean, my goodness, that's like the fourth one. Is that you? Where's, where's the worker of miracles? You know. So so what's happening there? It's like. To, Hey. Well, the Lord yeah. blessed him with miracle. Ethan's not had a severe attack in his <laughs> feature since we all prayed over him that time. Yeah. We were all in church and Ethan, as some oh, of you know, yeah. um, about nine months ago. And there's been heal- major healings yeah. in the room as well, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. And, um, so so that's been the stuff that's gone down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's what that says, alright? So. So what what this is saying is, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all you know people he, who heal and all that kind of stuff? Now, no is the answer. We're going to find out that no, because he not only gives it of his own volition, but he he places you in the body of his own volition as well. He's in charge of his church. You know, if you go to a church where they're saying to you, um, you go over there, you go over there, and, well, you better be careful because you you've got to be telling the tale that Jesus is telling in that church. You've got to be able to do that. And, um, I got my back up many years ago now about some pastoral language that were being used in these church leaders um, and they were talking about this couple and they said yeah we released them to go and do this and I'm like you did what? and I'm like oh yeah we, re- we released them to go on this kind of mission and I'm going who did you release? because who did you have to release? Mm-hmm. in this church who have you got to actually release them and you're sending people? how do you send people? you're not the sender who places people in the body? Jesus. Who gives the gift? Jesus. So who's sending them? Who's releasing people? Jesus. So it all kind of, re- you reverse engineer the old thinking and say, well, we, we ought to be people who allows Jesus to do that amongst us. And therefore you, re- you remove all the scaffolding, you remove all the structure, all the system, as much as you can, and you, 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 know, you sit there, and this is working into chapter 11, now why God wants church like that, so that he's got access to his people, he can take people, place them in his body, gift them, work through them, and everyone grows exponentially, because you've not got all the stuff that's associated with Christianity. You know, so that's why he does it. So chapter 11, when we talk about the church, it's for a reason that it's very simple, once you find out what you know the early church was like, so that this stuff, which is vital for your growth, your vitality, my growth, my vitality, that the gifts are being used, is an easier process than trying to go through five levels of leadership, two courses to tell you that you you're actually secure in heaven, fourteen baptisms, you know, weeks before you can even, uh, you know what I mean, all that kind of stuff, and it's um, and that's why he does it. That's why because he wants the apostles to to be. Apostling. He wants the prophets to be profiteering. No, that's mine. <laughs> to be prophesying. He wants the um, healings to happen. God wants to speak through us. He wants to speak into our lives and he wants to build us up and encourage He wants to heal sickness. Some, we're not going to get into the, oh, why are some sicknesses in people's lives? Because that's something that God uses in your life, you know. Uh, that's a very broad statement, but there you go. But um, he can also heal when he wants to heal. And when he wants to show his glory, he'll do it, you know. So let's tonight put our faith in the God who not only wants to work through you and speak into your life, but he, he you know, he wants to uh, work through you into someone else's life. He wants you to horse the gift that he wants to issue forth through you. Now that should, if you're hearing me, and if I've taught this properly, make you feel excited because you can get part of God's plan to make this body that we are see and expand and you know be blessed and be healed in a lot of ways and grow and be you know restored and renewed become even better you know attached to the lord and anchored into the living god you know and this is what this is saying it's saying you know god wants to speak through you and he desires to he wants every all this thing to work and um me telling you it won't just flick a switch i know that but what we said before is your proximity and your desire and your hunger and thirst to meet Jesus where he is on his Father's throne, risen and glorified, is a key to you getting then into the Word and letting him sow them, that seed into your life and letting it all grow and make it into a healthy um, relationship you've got vertically so that it can be healthy horizontally. 
and um, we're all dependent on each other so we're not dependent uh, in independence we are interdependent and that's what God wants interdependence you know where I'm realizing that I need you guys to be working in the gifts of the spirit because you know I can I, I get lashed around a little bit and I'm sure what others do in the group just you know I get buffered like I could do with a word I could do with you know and sometimes I've been to the Lord and the silence is deafening because he he's got a word and he that words through you that words through you because you're the body that I'm part of are you the eye are you the ears are you the feet like an evangelist you know Sorry, can I understand yeah. um, you've gone to the Lord for an answer and you haven't got it but you've got it no, but I've sensed, I've sensed that what I want, what what God wants to happen, is for the body, us, to be issuing forth in spiritual gifts, so that when I, when you're sensitive to the Lord and you're speaking that out, whatever it is, or it's a gift, to, you know, whatever that spiritual gift is being used through you, then, you know, I think the Lord's going, you know, that's going to happen more. You're going to hear more of what I've got to say to you when everyone's, you know, up and running and confident and and just I think there's a lot of abandonment as well not so much worried about what others think that you're just going to go you know what I'm going to speak God's word out because I'm going to help somebody in this room yeah. you know does that make sense yeah. and um and these aren't easy things to to get a grip grip of if you're not used to it because it means that you might have to just you know with fear and trembling just go you know I feel that this is something that the Lord's saying and um, please test it because that's what the scripture says well we'll find out that all these things need to be tested and uh, but I feel like the Lord's saying and then what you feel like it, it is you know and it's usually something quite script, scriptural you know it will have to be really and then um, and then let's see where it goes from there um, does any of that make sense and just just like to try and ignite a passion to be in that space as a, as a, as a church because we're, we're not we don't want to go out, out flying off the handle on some charismatic lunatic fringe kind of church because there's a lot of that around you know what I mean it's like everything's like ooh you know and it's it's gone a bit crazy really but we also don't want to be sat down waiting for Christmas or something you know and, and, you know, and I think Ethan wants to wait for Christmas but I mean it's like we don't want to be just st- sat there thinking oh well this is it us four and no more and God doesn't want to speak for us because that's not scriptural the other thing's not scriptural but the balance is a healthy expectation that the Lord wants to speak through you and he wants to speak through you to this group or he wants to speak through you to a person who, who you're tr- in a trusted kind of Christian relationship with where you're sharing probably deep things in your life and then the Lord speaks to you and goes, you know what? And you can I've seen people set free. I've seen people fall on the floor in a heap of, you know, just snot and tears because they've just been, you know, that word, that thing that they've wanted has just been spoken into their ears and the Holy Spirit's gone boom and released something and they've just gone what you know and you just go oh that's just like I feel like the Lord's touched my life and you know that's one way where it all happens and, uh, and I want to be like I want to be um, subject to that I want that to be um, active in our church so that that can be more um, of a thing so let's pray oh wait questions please. questions do you understand that now yeah um, so you know like sometimes someone puts something in the whole group and goes I think this is for someone and it's a bit of scripture that someone being bold enough to think oh well, that wasn't for me but somebody, I feel it's for somebody else yeah. that type of thing people do it one on one or they can do it that way so having that boldness to think oh well, this might upset someone but I want to say it and I feel like I've got to say it yeah. does that make sense? <coughs> The church will work better when people are yeah. exercising their special, special abilities. Yeah. And it's always for building up and encouraging. Mm. I've, I've been in churches where people have gone, God's got a word for you. And actually, what it is, it's they're angry and they just want to, you know, you've done something which has annoyed them. Right? So to, to pretend that it's a gift of the Spirit to rebuke somebody like that is just disingenuous and actually quite wrong. So, um, but but we've discussed what the procedure is. If you've got some beef with somebody, go to them, 
and just talk to them in love and just say, you know what, I really value the unity of this, what we're doing, and I think that I'm just, I've got issues here, can we sit down and discuss it? But you, I've heard, people have come to me and gone, um, I think the Lord would like you to be more loving. I'd like, yeah, he would, but you saying it doesn't flick a switch and make me more loving, does it? Pray for me, you know, pray into my life, speak into my life, be a person who's like, you know, helpful to me. Yeah, and don't just don't just wag the finger at me. Just help me to be more loving, and you know. So, but if okay. Let's say that in this body, um, this beautiful body, right? Um, there's a wrongdoing. A wrongdoing. Do you mean sin? Yeah. A wrongdoing from one part of the body to another. Yeah. Sure. So what do you do then? So what would happen is is in Matthew 18 is really what's going on there. So Jesus is very clear. So what one would go to another with hope that somewhere over there, without it becoming like a public thing, and um, and don't forget, if that happens, the next person you tell, you've got to make a judgment whether you're gossiping or not, right? Or whether it's information someone needs to know. But um, but but don't. There's a balance between things that need to be discussed amongst people as well. So just so yeah. if somebody's wrong, someone and it's clear, then the procedure would be that hopefully you can sort it out between yourselves over a cup of coffee or whatever, and just say, hey, you know, for the sake of like, how can we sort this out? Then if you can't sort it out, then the person who feels wronged must go to uh, the elders because in a church that's you know probably bigger than this, you probably have more than one person functioning as an elder um, but you can still do it right and then if that's not going to resolve it you'd bring it before um, the I think there's another procedure before that yeah you go to the person you bring it before the elders then you would bring it before the church the person involved if it's they're not getting it I mean this it's, it's got to be a big issue for them to not really want to sort it out over coffee yeah. Then you'd bring it before the church and publicly. Now we saw that a couple of weeks ago when somebody had, um, had there's some um, um, bad relational stuff going on and sexual immorality going on, and Paul said publicly throw them out of the church. Right, so that doesn't sit well with a lot of churches, but that's what you've got to do. And um, and then you'd bring the person up and you'd say, hey, this is what's been going on. You've g- we went to you, we spoke to you. And then we brought it before the elders privately and we talked to you about it and said, why this is wrong, you carried on doing it. And you just, you know, this is over time. And then um, the third thing is, well, now, before all the brothers and sisters, I want to declare that this is a sin that you're doing. It's actually something that you've not repented of. You don't intend to repent of it. So we're going to put you out of the church for a while. Now, you, some people are probably thinking, oh my goodness, what sort of, this is this group? But I'm only no. being biblical. Yeah, no, it's only it's biblical to so do that. Yeah, lawsuits amongst believers. So what had happened, people were suing each other in the church. You see, so, and what Paul said is, look, what are we, you've already been completely defeated because you're taking matters within the, the, the holy the church. church and you're making it a, a matter of the world. Yeah. So, I mean, so if, if say, sorry for this, um, Dan, but if Dan nicks your car tonight and goes for joyride and donuts all around like Woolworths Car Park, Number one, I'd be in the car with him. But no, 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 I'm serious. But, <laughs> but if he did that and he committed a crime, then the, the first thing we say to Dan as a group is, where's Jesus in your life? What, what happened there? You can't steal cars and go doing donuts. Are you all right? And he'd probably say, no, I had a temporary lapse of men, you know, breakdown as well. You yeah, know, yeah. because Dan wouldn't simply do that. But if that does, and it would be potentially a legal thing, we'd get, to the, uh, we'd get together as a group and we'd say, well, what do we do about this? Because uh, something, and then they'd probably be, by that time, you'd probably turn and say, I'm really sorry, can I repar- uh, repair this? Can I bring some kind of wholeness to it? And can I, you know, so that's been settled within the group. But if you went, if you went, that, that's it, I'm going, my Ferrari, you stole my Ferrari and you just wrapped it around a lamppost, Dan, I'm going to the courts, right? I know you haven't got a Ferrari, no, but, um, but, but, but the thing would be, the thing would be, Helen, this is really important to listen to, though, is Helen hasn't understood what this is. 
if that's what you're doing and that's what happened in Corinth they didn't understand what the church was what it actually yeah. the, the set apart body of Christ the singled out and, and holiness of, of the oneness of the people and, um, and it, let it dawn on you that you're not of this world if you're a Christian here tonight and you, you're truly saved right, you're not of this world you are separated from it you're taken out from it um, and, and set apart from, from it yeah. by the Father's good pleasure all right so it's been done since the beginning of creation God knew all this would happen you remember the new covenant you can't get out of it sorry but you can right mm -hmm. so let's just enjoy it and let's try and do it properly yeah. happy mm -hmm. any more questions let's pray so father we do thank you because um, you have uh, a desire to speak to us and through us Lord you have you've got gifts that you want to good gifts Lord for the common good for the building up and encouragement of um, of all your children Lord um, uh, help us to be people who can be vessels who can accommodate that Lord help us to be bold and courageous um, help us to be brave Lord God to to f step forward tonight Lord and say let it be me let it be me here I am um, just issue forth through me Lord let me have a hunger and thirst for you. Restore my passion and desire for you, Lord. Um, help me to be like those days of old when I couldn't think of anything but you. <laughs> and, and just re renew that first love. And when, when you do bring me forward for that, Lord God, I put my hand up for your election to work through, Lord God. Help me to be sensitive to that, Lord. And over the next few weeks, Lord, help us to um, deliver clear teaching so that we know what this actually looks like and what to expect through our lives when you come upon us and we get filled with the Holy Spirit to such a degree that we're issuing forth your gifts and your blessings. It's actually graces, your graces amongst one another. So help us to do that in the name of Jesus. Amen.